Welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study, episode 56. Today we're diving into Acts chapter 2, verses 25 through 41. We're going to be talking about Peter, which is to the crowd, part 2. Today we have Brother Jack Bay with us. To begin, we're going to start off with a prayer by me. We're going to be led by Brother Jack Bay today, and the end of prayer will be done by Brother Jack Bay. If you guys can, please bow your heads and close your eyes for the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. We thank you for that day that you've made. I rejoice to be God. God. We pray as now as two of your sons come together, God, to be able to learn about your word, God, to be able to educate each other, God. I and to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that you reveal these information unto us, God. We pray that you give us our relations and different understanding, God. Continue to learn more about you, God. I pray that the audience will be able to receive the same message that we receive, God. I pray that we'll continue to dig deep in your word each and every single day, God. I pray that the viewers will come along on this journey with us, God, to continue to learn, God. But not only learn through this video, but learning on their own time, too, God. We just praise you and we thank you, God. In Jesus, in your holy name, amen. Amen. All right, so we pick up at chapter 2, verse 25. It continues with the sermon Peter was preaching. 25, it says, King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue shouts his praises. My body rests in hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. Now, I think we could pause there real quick and just kind of assess um, what is Peter saying? He's referencing uh, something King David said. He said, King David said this about him, about who? About the Lord. Yeah. So what else do you think is going on here in these three or four verses? In these three or four verses, Peter is explaining how the Lord is working through him. Because it says that I see the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad and my tongue is above his praise. My body rests in his hope. For you will not leave my soul among the dead and allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life and you will fill me with the joy of your presence. So he's talking about how God is working through him and how God has blessed him and how God has just continued to keep him and he's very happy about it. Yeah. So so it's not Peter who was saying this though, right? I mean, it's Oh, that's King David, sorry. Right. It's, it's David. So he's referencing uh or he's quoting something David said in Psalms chapter 16. Right. And as the emphasis here is that um the Messiah resurrected right he said for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow the holy one to rot in the grave and so he's emphasizing uh, the resurrection right jesus um body was not left to rot in the grave but indeed he was resurrected on the third day right and i think you know and in, in, in taking it outside of that the context it would serve as a great encouragement to someone as well right and no wonder my heart is glad and my body shouts his praise and my body rests in hope, right? You see that the Lord is always with me. And I think that's a great encouragement to know that, that God is always with us. And of course, this is kind of taken outside of the context of, you know, what's written here because it's David speaking about Jesus, right? So 29, it continues on, says, Dear brothers, think about this. You can be sure that the patriarch David wasn't referring to himself, for he died and was buried, and his tomb is still here among us. But he was a prophet, and he knew God had promised with an oath that one of David's own descendants would sit on his throne. David was looking into the future and speaking of the Messiah's resurrection. He was saying that God would not leave him among the dead or allow his body to rot in the grave. God raised Jesus from the dead, and we are all witnesses of this. 
Now he is exalted to the place of highest honor in heaven at God's right hand. And the father, as he had promised, gave him the Holy Spirit to pour out upon us, just as you see in here today. For David himself never ascended into heaven. Uh, yet he said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them your footstool. What's your, your takeaway um, as David continues this sermon? My takeaway from this sermon. Okay, so he's talking about how the Messiah with that love to be right in the grave, he was lifted up and ascended into heaven because that was not meant for him to stay in the ground like others was like others who stayed there and was able to run Jesus body didn't run he uh, he arose and then he ascended up into heaven and also his replacement came in which was prophesied to the people Jesus told them that I I have something I have a replacement coming after me I have somebody that will seek that was see, see, no. That will be with you, but that will be with you and continue to guide you in the same way I did. Yeah, no, absolutely, right. And you know, if we look at verse thirty-one, at David was speaking prophetically, right, speaking about the future and speaking about or continuing about. You know, Peter continues to. To, to shine light on, on the resurrection, right? So P Peter is speaking prophetically, right, um, of the Messiah's resurrection. Again, as you were saying, that um, God would not leave him or Jesus in the dead or among the graves. Um, Peter continues to refer, refer to some of um, the things that King David said, right? And a lot of um, this text pulls from the book of Psalms. So, even the verses I believe, 34 and 35, they're referring to our quoting scriptures in Psalms 110. And so we see David going back and referring to some of the things that King David has said. Right? Um, and I think one, you know, one of my favorite verses um, is 35. Right? And, and sometimes we refer to the scripture, until I humble your enemies and, and making them a footstool under your feet. What do you think that means? When I read that, my mind was all over the place with um, that verse because I was trying to figure out, okay, what do they mean by that? Um, and I, I didn't have nothing. <laughs> so honestly, I don't have, I really don't know what they mean by that. I no, was trying to figure it out, but I don't got nothing. They go for a footstool though. Right, you, you put your feet up on it. To relax. Mm -hmm. Right, so in, in a sense, um, God will put your enemies beneath you, right? They won't be able to, to what's the right word? They won't be able to do what they, they normally, or hate on you for lack of a better word, right? Because God is going to put them beneath you. Right? It, in the simplest way of putting it. Does that make sense? Uh, right. So just continuing on um, in 36, he says, so let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter says in verse 38, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you and to your children and even to the Gentiles, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized 
and added to that, added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. And I think a lot of times we look back to this chapter, right? We remember uh, this great sermon just because of how many people were saved and added to the church in, in one single day. 3,000. Imagine um, what that would look like present day. Imagine, Ezra, are you preaching mm-hmm. and so many people come to know Christ? Right? And what, what I love about these verses is Peter makes it clear that the, this gift of salvation isn't just for the Jews, right? It's not just for, but even to the Gentiles, but, but not even just for that, but it's for everybody, right? That Jesus can't, Jesus died and, and, and rose for, for all of us, right? Not, no one's excluded. No age, no race. Everyone, he, he, he died so that we may have eternal life. And, and this is for everyone. That's, this is why I, I, I love this verse in particular. It serves as just a great reminder. It's not just for certain people. It's not just for those that um, have never sinned. It's for those that have sinned. It, Jesus died for each and every one of us. What, you know, what, what are some of your takeaways from, from these verses? My takeaway is verses 38, where Peter says, Each of you must repent of your sin, turn to God, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for, this forgive, for, the, given, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And here, right here, it gives you the instruction of how you can receive the Holy Spirit. Because I know some of us may not know exactly how um, you receive the Holy Spirit and exactly who the Holy Spirit is. You have to dig deep more into the Word to find out. But verses 38 pointed out to me because it shows you how to receive the Holy Spirit. That's the first step, right? Um, the repent of your sins. And it, what's your definition of repentance? My definition of repentance is asking for forgiveness with changed behavior. That's good. That's good. All right, that's the key. And I think sometimes a lot of people get caught up on just the first part, just asking for forgiveness. Right? But repenting, as you said, is, is changed behavior. And it's really making the commitment not to do what you did again. Right? You're making a complete turnaround. Change. The first point that you said, I was going to talk about that too. The fact that they was able to um, have 3,000 people, you know, just be baptized and added to the church. And we can definitely do that today because none is impossible. With the um, amount of resources we have, the amount of connections, we could do something like that today. Because back then, they didn't have the internet, they didn't have social media where they could reach a whole bunch of people. To reach the people that was close to them, like uh-huh. us, that now that can reach people far away from us, we can do that. Okay. Why? Why do you think Peter was saying they need to, or rather, we need to be, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? Because he was already baptized. Okay, but just because he did it. Why, why do we have to do it's, it's a significant step in your journey um, with God to be able to go down into the water and come back up. Because baptism represents, it represents so much and a, a very significant meaning. And in that scripture, he have already done it. So with him saying we, that means he have to do it again. But with him already doing it, it's like, Y'all have to be baptized because his place with God is already set. Now we're working on you placement with God. So that's why so I guess is my place with God not set if I don't get baptized? No. Expound on that. What do you mean? No? Uh, see, that's a very good You know what? Let me think on that before I get in. That's actually a very good question. Think about, think about it like this. If 
Uh, your pastor is baptized, and he tells you to get baptized. Why? Why should you do it? No. Okay. So is, is my place with God not set? If I don't get baptized. I'll say no. I'll say your place would get set for God based on your lifestyle and how you serve the Lord. So if your lifestyle and the way you serve a line with God, then your placement, I believe, is set. Even if you probably don't get baptized. So you're saying it's set if you don't get baptized? I'm I'm just guessing. I'm just trying to come up with things because that threw me off. But I'm glad you asked that question because it's making me think. Uh-huh. So, question, do you need to be baptized in order for your placement to be set? Do you, all right. Ask it this way: Do you have to be baptized to go to heaven? Uh, I feel I'm kind of in the middle with that one. I'm kind of in the middle with that one because I'm on the yes side because I know it's that step that you take um, to, that's, you know, yes, I'm going to say yes there because baptism represents the departure of the old you and the entry of the new you because once you baptize, all old things are now passed away and now you're on a new beginning to try to live that straight life so i'll say i'll say yes to that one i'll say yes i thought when i accepted christ that was the beginning of anything yeah so you're saying they're simply just say that because once you accept that um, you come up with the heart the hard hitters today uh yeah but this yeah scripture do say that scripture do say that um that's making me change my answer because with that, I'm leaning towards the no side. And I know you ain't going to give me that answer easily. I know you want me to figure it out, so I'm not going to buy the track. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, here's the day. Um, I'll say no. The reason why I'll say no because once you accept the Holy Father in your heart and you believe that he's the Messiah, you believe that he's Lord, believe that he came into this world not to condemn this world, but the word through him might be safe. And you serve him and your life align with his word, you'll 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 make it in to me without getting baptized. I think that I, I think baptism or the significance of it. You know, I remember several years ago when it was explained to me at this what's your favorite team uh let's go with the warriors so the warriors. this is how it is explained it was explained to me mm-hmm. when you get baptized essentially you ezron you're putting on that warriors jersey so you now identify with the warriors right the organization and Simply put, that's essentially the significance of baptism, right? You get baptized, you identify yourself with Christ and with the community of believers, right? So now you're saying, uh, this is where I stand. This is the life that I'm living. This is the journey that I'm on. And God, I'm on your team. I'm on this path. Simply put. Right? And I think you said something similar in the beginning when I asked you about what does it mean to get baptized, I just had to pick your brain regarding you know, baptism versus salvation. Do you need both? Do you need one? Does one get you into heaven? Do you need both to get into heaven? Um, and I would agree with you. But you don't have to be baptized to make it into heaven. But I think our as we're on this journey, we should continue to follow the example that Christ set. Right? So Christ was baptized. right? And, and so should we be baptized. Now, baptism is not for the cleansing of sin, right? But again, to identify you within the body of Christ, right? That you are a follower of Christ and you are a part of the community of believers. Does that make sense? 
It def it definitely does. And um I'm so glad that you picked my brain on that because it made me think and I feel like I'm definitely gonna leave this thing because this is an important conversation. Cause so that we we know that our information, our knowledge is right. Cause we never want to sway nobody in the um in the wrong in the wrong way. And to agree on Jarve on that point, you don't need to be baptized in order to get into the heaven. But on this work, we're follow, on this walk, we're following the leadership of Christ. We're following the example of Christ. An example of Christ was to get baptized. So. It's in favor for you to do it, but it won't hinder your placement if you don't do it. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying to those that are saved, don't get baptized because you're going to make it into heaven either way. You have the opportunity to do it. You should. Right? But there are some that accept Christ and, you know, they pass away. I mean, we get an opportunity to get baptized. That doesn't disqualify them or just, you know, discredit them from making it into heaven, right? They didn't have the opportunity, but to those of us that do, that are saved, you should continue on this path and um, get baptized, right? Again, so that we identify with Christ and with the community of believers, right? But that was, um, you know, our, our study for today. I don't know if you have anything else you want to add in. As of right now, I do not. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's it for me. I, I just want to, I guess, end with this. And it wasn't originally a part of this morning study within the last weeks. But, you know, one of my favorite scriptures, Acts 2.21, uh, Peter simply says in the sermon, but everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And just want to somewhat, you know, encourage someone today, whatever you're going through, whatever is going on. We don't know, but God knows. I promise you that you, you call on him. Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. And so I just want to encourage someone this morning, if you have not made that, that step as yet, I encourage you to make that next step. And as the Bible says, as Peter says in this sermon, call on the name of the Lord. You shall be safe. All right? That's it for me. Ezra. As you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And I agree on every point with that Brother Jave said. <laughs> now we're going into the closing prayer for today, which will be done by Brother Jave. Heavenly Father, we honor you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to get on Zoom and share and study your word. We thank you for insight. We thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We pray, God, that someone will watch this video and that they, they will be blessed. We pray that someone will come to know you as their Lord and personal Savior, even by just re-watching this study. We thank, thank you for Ezra and this ministry. We pray that God, you continue to bless him and bless the work of his hands. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. I pray, God, that you'll continue to birth within us uh, thirst and hunger for your word. Let the word be a non-negotiable. In the name of Jesus, I pray that we will continue to study it day and night in the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, and we leave all things in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank yes. you, Brother Jerry, for coming along on this video with us to learn about uh, the word and just have these different relations and ask questions, just continue to learn iron to be able to sharpen iron. Also, thank you guys for coming back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 56. If you haven't already liked the video, subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload YouTube, we'll send you a notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video.